GTS 450. This GPU was released in 2010. It normally draws 106 watts and it's a supplemental 6-pin power cable. But today we have a very rare GTS 450 that doesn't need any supplemental power. It gets all of its power from the PCI slot itself. To achieve such a low power draw, they had to cut down core frequency, the shader amount and some other stuff as well. Here's the comparison between the regular GTS 450 and the one that we have right here in our system. I actually didn't even know that PCI slot powered GTS 450 even existed, let alone officially manufactured by Asus. It reminds me of what they did with RTX 3050 recently. Anyhow, I bet you guys are curious about the performance of this GPU, so let's not waste any more time and see what it's capable of. We're gonna start the benchmarks with Valorant. This game is extremely CPU dependent and it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that we're able to get upwards of 100 FPS here. The graphics are set to low and we're running the game at 1080p resolution. While I was playing this deathmatch, the gameplay was extremely smooth. There were no stutters at all and it was a really enjoyable experience. I actually had a lot of fun. I did expect this game to run well, but I honestly didn't expect to see 200 FPS here. You can literally play this game competitively on this cutdown version of GTS 450. So in case you also play Valorant and you wanna achieve high FPS, focus on upgrading your CPU because this game has really weak graphics and you'll be better off with more modern and powerful CPU rather than some RTX GPU because the game is basically 90% CPU oriented. Speaking of CPU oriented games, Fortnite is also one of them. We're running this game on performance mode at 1080p low settings. Now even though Fortnite is known for having a lot of starters, it ran incredibly well on this old GPU. In terms of FPS we averaged around 60. It did go below that a lot of the times, but in houses and not graphically intensive areas, it even went as high as 90. Overall I would say that it was a smooth experience and the game was quite responsive even when the FPS was in mid 40s. Let's move on to a bit more demanding shooter, Counter Strike 2. Initially I thought I'd get more FPS in this game, but apparently I was wrong. At 1080p low settings with FSR set to balanced, the FPS stayed in mid 30s for the most part. It was barely playable and it most definitely was not enjoyable. Then I turned off FSR and set the resolution to native 720p, after which the game became a lot more responsive and we started getting upwards of 50 FPS. After playing deathmatch for 10 minutes at this resolution, I can certainly say that CS2 is playable at 720p on this GTS 450. GTA 5 was another important title that I was worried about. At first I went with 1080p with the lowest possible settings. The game was definitely playable but it was not as enjoyable as I wanted it to be. So then I quickly dropped the resolution down to 720p and it solved all my worries. It became a lot more responsive and we started getting around 60 FPS. But I gotta say, there were no stutters in this game no matter what resolution we chose. Overall, I'd say that I would have been content with this experience if this was the GPU I had to play GTA 5 on. And of course our last game will be Dota 2. When I saw that I had upwards of 100 FPS at 1080p lower settings, I quickly swapped it to medium because I thought the game looked way better like that. FPS is not as important here and the response time didn't actually change even though we basically have the FPS. Overall I had a great time. MOBAs usually are not as demanding and it shouldn't be a surprise that GTS 450 can run Dota 2 at 60 plus FPS. As for the AAA games or pretty much the vast majority of the modern games are not quite playable on this GPU. I guess this GTS 450 only shines in older games where the CPU is doing the heavy lifting. I didn't test games like Minecraft or League of Legends because they use even less GPU power and the point is already proven. This GPU can handle older games on low settings or even the new ones if their graphics are as weak as Valorant's. Before I wrap this up, I wanna thank you guys so much for the overwhelming support. I love making videos as much as you guys love watching them. My goal is to make at least one video per week. As long as I have time and I know what I wanna make the video about, I'll keep making them. And by the way, I do apologize about the gameplay quality because I don't own a capture card just yet and the screen was recorded with my phone. But I will be investing into a good capture card in the nearest future because I honestly want you guys to enjoy every part of the video. 
Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Take care, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.